How is it so that some people learn so much faster than others? Is it only the matter of intelligence? Not quite. If you're interested, stay tuned. Hi, this is Sebastian Antonovich and on my 5-minute psychology channel I talk about education, self-development and mental health. Before I move on, if you're interested in becoming even better at understanding human nature, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Every week there is a new video coming up. How to make someone a better learner or how to become one yourself? Psychology has been scrutinizing this topic for over a hundred years now and it has come up with pretty good ideas. Operant conditioning or instrumental learning is one of these ideas. It was developed and studied by Edward Thorndike who observed as a cat was trying to get out of a cage. At first the moves of this animal were rather random. The cat was trying to get out using some different techniques but none of them worked. Suddenly, by accident, the cat pulled the trigger which opened the door to the cage. What happened when you put the cat next time to the same cage? Well, it was able to get out quite quickly and with much fewer useless moves. And of course, there was also B.F. Skinner. You may recognize this name as one of the beloved characters of The Simpsons. Principal Skinner, the creators of this cartoon, were inspired by all the achievements of B.F. Skinner. So what did he do? He studied further operant conditioning. And what did he discover? Skinner studied behavior of a rat in a box, box that was called Skinner's box. In more professional words, it was known as operant conditioning chamber. There was consequence to every behavior of this rat. So if a rat pulled a trigger, he would get some food. If the rat was annoyed with too loud music, he could always press a button which would stop it. Some bad behaviors were followed by a delicate electric current in the cage. Skinner noticed that if a behavior is followed with something pleasant, it will most likely be repeated. If a behavior is followed by something unpleasant, there is a big chance that the rat will stop doing that. But why am I telling you about cats and rats? Well, because human beings are animals. We are not that much different uh, from other animals and our behaviors are also quite similar. And how can we apply this knowledge? According to Skinner, there are a couple of concepts I would like to discuss with you. One of them is positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. If a rat pulled the trigger, he would get some food. And knowing that, he would repeat this action to get more food. Whenever you see a behavior which you would like to be repeated, what you need to do is you need to reward it in some way. Uh, it could be, for example, a friendly handshake. It could be a smile. It could be a compliment. This way, we're going to make people repeat this activity for which they were praised. So if this rat was annoyed with too loud music, he could press a particular button after which this music would stop. This is exactly what we can apply with other people. What we can do is when you see that someone behaves in the right way, you can make something to make them feel better by releasing them from some sort of burden. So for example, if your kid is in the process of preparing to a very important exam that you want him to pass, what you can do is you can say, all right, so um, if you read another chapter of this book, you don't have to do the dishes today. Of course, you have to decide what's more important to you, this education or the dishes. If something like this happens more often, there is a big chance that you will create some positive feelings related to the behavior of learning. There is also the concept of positive punishment and there is nothing pleasant. Positive punishment is adding a stimulus which is unpleasant to the rat or to the person. Uh, in case of Skinner box, it could be this uh, slight uh, electric current in the cage. And uh, for someone you want to influence, well, it could be, for example, punishing someone by asking them to do an additional exercise as their homework or writing another essay. 
And there is also a negative punishment. As weird as it sounds, negative punishment is nothing else uh, but taking away something pleasant as a punishment of an unwanted behavior. So if a rat behaved in a bad way, we could take away some food from him. And uh, if, for example, one of your employees behaves in a bad way, well, you can take away some of their salary for not doing the job right. Mm. But how to really use this operant conditioning in learning environment? There are a couple of rules you may want to follow. Number one, choose the most important behaviors which you need to be repeated. If you reinforce absolutely every good behavior, there is a chance that it will be very difficult to decide for the student the priorities. Number two is regularity versus irregularity. At the very beginning, it is very important to reinforce these wanted behaviors very regularly to create this good habit. With time, you do not need to do it that regularly. Actually, if you do it irregularly, there is a chance that these new behaviors, they will last for longer without any reinforcement. Number three choose to reinforce some good behaviors rather than to punish bad ones. Reinforcements are much more powerful than punishments. Yes, punishments are somewhat effective for some time, but rather than teach students a different behavior, they just stifle the bad behavior for the time being. This is not a very effective way. It's much better to reinforce this wanted behavior, and whenever you see a bad behavior, just ignore it. Don't show it any attention. Number four is about moderation. When you reinforce some behavior, it is very important to do it in the right amount. There is a very simple reason behind it. If you keep someone hungry, they will be more motivated to fight for food. And it also refers to every other behavior. If you pay your employee the absolute maximum amount of money you can, very shortly you will see that there is nowhere to go from this place. Number five, immediacy. Whenever you see a behavior that needs to be repeated, make sure to reinforce it immediately when you see it. Don't wait with it. The sooner you do it after this behavior, the better result you will get. This way, this connection between the good behavior and this reinforcement will be much more vivid in the mind of the student. Number six is consistency. Make sure never to reinforce a behavior that you do not want to be repeated. This is very important because if for example, by an accident you reinforce a bad behavior, there is a slight chance that the student will concentrate on it and will keep repeating the bad behavior, and your reinforcement of good behaviors will not be as powerful. Number seven, size. Yes, size does matter. So, for example, if you pay some kid some money for cleaning your garage, there is a bigger chance that this activity will be repeated if you pay more money. Money. The more you invest, the more you get. And in certain situations, if you are just too stingy, the effect may not even be visible because this reinforcement has to be strong enough to be attractive. Of course, operant conditioning is much more complex than that. I can make more videos on this topic if you're interested, but you have to tell me about it in the comments. And for now, perhaps you would be interested in another one of my videos about Mr. Skinner. And I'll see you next time.